the zone. We had a team flight. I remember sitting in my seat. I looked up like places to skydive for Because I just needed like an yeah. adrenaline, like yeah. something to like. And my mom woke me up. It was like 11 a.m. She's like, you just got drafted, like first pick of the fifth round. I was like, Ooh. I remember throwing it and looking back at me like, oh, 100? Like, my coach crazy. too was like, get 100. Yeah. And I was like, just so happy. But yeah, let's get right into it. So let's go. I guess the first question I have is what was your story to where you are today in a nutshell? As far like baseball, as just, far as that goes? Sure, yeah. It baseball. was I had like the typical like a little kid, I played baseball and I just like fell in love with it early yeah. age. I did every sport, like pretty typical in California. It's just like nice weather every mm -hmm. season, every right. year. So I did like baseball, football, basketball, track, all that stuff. Track and baseball were my were my two like main sports, right. I guess. And I just track didn't really have like a future. Sure, so I think sure. It was just I had to kind of pick one in high school and Baseball and track were the same season. I did baseball. I never got sick of it. I always loved it. I was good until I sucked in like the seventh grade. I just, okay. Like, everyone just like blew up and like sprouted. And I just, I was just not good from like seventh to like 10th grade. And then I had my like, I kind of filled in a little bit sure. and like got my growth spurt. And then like junior year, I was all right. I was like 86. Senior year, I was like, I got up to like 93, I think once, but mm -hmm. I was like low 90s, got drafted, fifth round. Right. Pirates. And then Ray's now we're here doing podcasts. Yeah, yeah, I know. That was yeah. perfect. You, you surprised yeah. that great. Yeah, you so go. I remember you telling the story about you practicing mechanics in mm -hmm. the grocery store. Oh yeah. And as a kid who was growing up, uh, you know, my, my big thing was like I just knew mechanics were so important. I want to gain velo, always yeah. looking up how to gain velocity. And I remember you saying that that resonated so much to me because I'd see my reflection in the grocery yeah. store thing and I'd be like, all right, get my glute load, whatever. It right. just, can you kind of yeah. discuss like the mental, you know, adversity you went through uh, through minor league ball? Yeah. I'll say on the on that like mechanical stuff I think that's like a gift and a curse in a weird way like you have that perfectionist brain you know yeah. where you want to like be perfect all the time but right. I think I got so far into that that it like screwed me up I went on the other side like, yeah like, my bell curve was like you got it's good to be obsessive about what you got to do but it just like it was like every waking moment I was thinking about baseball and right. I think when it, it like consumes you and it's your job it's kind of like pretty standard right but as far as like the adversity goes within baseball like um I think everyone, like at some point in their career, goes through it. Like I had it, like I said, a little bit seventh through like tenth grade. I wasn't, it wasn't like crazy, but I just wasn't as good as everyone around me. Right. And then that started to go away. I got into pro ball, and I think the added stress of pro ball, knowing it was my job, knowing that like I didn't, I don't have like a college education, all that, right. blah blah blah. Right. Maybe added to it a little bit, but even when I was doing well in, in like the early minor leagues, I still like had this really like in like just not good headspace I guess it was always like I was very stressed like I guess with that perfectionist headspace I was always like baseball was my only avenue of like happiness it was, right I've said it before like when I'm when I was doing well I was like, very happy and like yeah. a good teammate and everything like that when I was doing bad still a good teammate but I was I was just more like I don't know you you when you're not doing well you kind of like I got a little shitty I right. guess. Like, yeah 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 uh so I just went up up and down with that I think um especially getting called up to the big leagues in 16 that like I don't think mentally I was ready but mm -hmm. I don't think there was like more time would have gotten me ready I think I had to go there and fail because I didn't necessarily fail a whole lot statistically in the minor leagues right so I think it was kind of like a punch in the face to go up there and just suck so hard yeah but it was such an awesome like experience for me to go up there suck get into like the worst headspace I possibly could have gotten into and then like slowly dug myself out of it to where now I think like when I do have like I don't know. You always go through your ups and downs in a season. I just think I compare it to then, and I'm like, oh, it's nothing. So I think yeah. for now, like, that was the worst baseball headspace I could have gotten in. So I think, like, just getting out of that helped me a lot. Do you think it just helped you a lot just overall in, in life, just kind of dealing with adversity? Yeah, I think baseball is like a – it's like a – it's a little vehicle of life. I'd say it, like, very – it, like, mimics the same kind of ups and downs as you experience. Mm -hmm. And I think because it's so concentrated and in such a high stress, like, a normal job, I guess, or like a normal – day to day there's not as much like up and down you know right. it's just such a condensed like stressful version of like work yeah it's sure, like sure seven sure. months of like i'm doing great it's awesome doing bad it's awesome you know yeah. and you kind of have to like figure out how to like ride those waves and not make them so insane and right i think that ultimately like helps a lot in regular life i think it's like almost desensitized me to like certain things that maybe if i didn't play baseball i would have been more like emotionally involved or like just certain mm. little things that maybe would bother Something like outside of baseball, I think I have a good grasp of like, well, not a big deal. Dude, like, that's I funny you like, say that. I, I feel that kind of same way, and I obviously haven't had much, as long as a career as you, but just in my short playing career. It's, I think it's pretty similar with baseball players, especially if you like care and you put a lot of effort into it, just like anything. Like, and you you do fail and you do like have that up and down, and like I almost have it, and you lose it. Like that whole that I think that 
definitely, yeah. no matter what level you play at, it, it like kind of gets you hardened in life, and I guess, that, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I think the next level to that is even like as a pitcher, it's even, it seems even more elevated because it's like you velocity. Every like one mile an hour seems so right. far of a jump, but it's like, yeah, yeah. one day you, you PR'd, whatever, and the next day you're down three miles an hour. Whatever. Yeah, for sure. And I think that was a lot of what stressed me out early, too. It was like, I think like wanting to chase perfection all the time and like thinking it was attainable and when I didn't have it I was like this is terrible and I had to like it was always one of those dudes that like when I was on the mound not throwing hard it was like well if I throw 70 more fastballs maybe I'll get my velo sure like, sure it was just I think over time I've learned to like uh be good with that I still have moments like that even now like in the big leagues and I think it just like I bet like 10 year veterans still have that but I just think it, you kind of can like catch it quicker and like no it's just like you're yeah. stressed. Just give it a day. You're fine. What do you think has been your best moment of your career so far? Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. Um, you talk about the highs and the lows. Yeah. And- I think, like, pl- all the playoffs. I th- Honestly, watching Brasso hit a homer off of Chapman. I'm not even kidding. I wasn't even me playing. Yeah. Like, that is something I always think about. Like, just that, the, like, bubble season and um, – just going to like that was like the first time we went deep in playoffs and like we like beat the Yankees at game five or what it was game I can't even game yeah. five right yeah, yeah, yeah it was I think, game I think five was. we beat the Yankees that was insane mm-hmm. and we beat the Astros like that whole whirlwind of everything was pretty insane I think like personally statistically or something like that um, I think like getting traded to the Rays and. 18 and then maybe not 18 but like getting that off season and then coming back the 19th like a like a different dude i think starting the year out hot and then like realizing it was the first time i was like oh, okay I, like this is like the minor leagues not like the minor leagues but i was just putting way too much like external pressure on myself like it was it ended up i, I think like once i kind of realized like i'm good and i don't need to stress about the shit all the right. time i can like it made me feel like I did in the minor leagues again, where it's like, let's just compete every five stars as opposed to let's worry about everything I possibly can worry about. So it, probably that huh. I'd say personally, I've, I've heard a lot of from like big leaguers is like, it took a while for them to feel like they belong in the big leagues. Cause it's like, you're idolizing these people for so, for so long in your life. When did you feel like you first belonged? Was it then? Like yeah. In yeah. I think 19, I think it was, I got hurt after that. It was like the same injury I've had forever, but it was, um, <laughs> that first, like, I think I don't even remember how many starts I had like 11 or something like that. But it was a good chunk, and I did really well, and I was, like, shoving. And I just felt, even, like, the like my bad days, I could still scrape out a good start. Uh, and I'd say that, yeah. I think it was uh, probably around 19 is when I stopped, like, getting that, like, oh, I'm facing this person, that person. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, probably that. I can't even imagine that because it's, like, you're on the biggest stage, right, and then you're worried about, do, do I even belong on the stage instead of just, like, performing? It's kind right. of, just a weird – I don't know. It's a, it, For me, it's just, like, a weird what's dichotomy. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, sure. like, you feel like you're the best in the world, but you feel like you don't belong with all right. the best in the world. I think for me specifically, too, like, I always knew I was, like, physically talented enough. Mm-hmm. Like, I always did so well in the minor leagues. I think the biggest thing for me was, like, mentally, for some reason, from AAA to the big leagues, I would just, like, curl up into this little ball yeah. in my head. I was so, like – terrified of failing when I got up there and I think it just like was the constant like back and forth not doing well that finally I kind of just was like okay <laughs> stop like yeah. do, do something different and I think I went into the 18-19 season and like I think having one good start and then two good starts three good starts you st- sort of slowly realize like okay I can I think I think I can do this and there's still like I'm saying this now there'll be court like in the season now in the rest of my career I'll have moments of being like I suck. Like I just, yeah. I, it's, it's typical for everyone. Yeah. Like you get into a bad stretch of starts and like your confidence is a little weathered, but I think as long as you know that like your, st- your foundation is like, all right, I'm just being soft right now. I'm just right. like, it's, I'm in the roller coaster of the season and you have to like identify it quick and try to get out of it. Do you ever like go on social media and like, I mean like Twitter, like Twitter's so annoying. No, I used to have a Twitter for some reason. Like I'm not even saying this in like a, like a, braggadocious way, but like sure. I never got weirded out when people would like say stuff to me on Twitter. That's I always good. like, I think if I were to seek it out and like Google my name and, and see that, I would probably feel a different way about yeah. it. Like then I would be like, because this person's not directing it towards me. But right. when I had a Twitter and people would like at me, I'd be like, nah, it's, what can you do? It's baseball. Like yeah. I never felt weird about that. But I think when I would go like search my name or something like early, I don't really do that anymore. Right. But I, I think that's when I'd be like, I think as a human, you really only have so much like people can talk about like it doesn't affect them, but like. If you see like 20 people talking all sorts of stuff about yeah. you, it's like kind of, so I think it was just one of those things where like anytime I ever do bad, I just, it's easy for me. I just don't like, go on any of the stuff. Like it yeah. used to be maybe a bit harder, but I just, I don't have a Twitter. The only thing I have is an Instagram. Yeah. That's huge. And like, I don't, I don't really like, that's not like a huge, like at, you know? So yeah. Just, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. If I do bad, I just like don't really go on it. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I know a lot of guys just like, it's so, 
accessible to just be like, I yeah. wonder what people are saying about me right, right now after you had a shitty game. So yeah. it's like, I, I think as long if, if you like feel that feeling and then like resist it and don't search for a while, give it like a couple months and then you don't have that feeling anymore. You yeah. just don't want to search it. Yeah. To yeah. kind of pivot a little bit, who are, who are some of the best dudes you've faced in the big leagues, like toughest outs to get as hitters? Now it's kind of a hard pivot, but that's just uh, something I'm always interested no, in asking. No, it's a good pivot. Uh, probably Xander Bogarts, probably. Yeah. Um, he's really good. I think even when I'm like on my on my game, I just think he's he's like I don't know if like slows it down correctly is right, but he you can just tell certain guys have like a really like concrete approach, mm. and it's not like certain dudes you can just tell by like how far they're missing or like what approach they have or like you can tell guys like get off their approach or like you can tell if someone's uncomfortable. I think I think he's consistent and he always kind of knows. I don't know. He knows his own. I think Juan Juan Soto is the same way. Just his like plate discipline and the way he like just knows a strike from a ball. Right. So I think those are the two that probably come to mind. But yeah, probably Xander. Do you have any like particular stories like being in the big leagues? I wrote this on the script. I wasn't sure even how to ask it, but like a lot of times the normal fan just there's things that they don't see that mm-hmm. I think they would find very cool. That okay. just stories that don't get told. Do you have any of those stories? <laughs> we can always circle back to that too. It's yeah, just, cool. I don't. That's like I remember too. You sent the question before, and I didn't. I didn't like look through them. I know. In depth enough. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, that's okay. That's totally I, okay. Should, okay. I, I, do, I do have a story. Yeah. There's some I. I could say on here, some I won't say on here. Sure, sure. But I will say, I don't think I've ever said this before in a podcast, but when I was in with the Pirates in 2017, when I was like mentally just at my worst, we had a team flight from, I don't remember where we were coming from, but we were going to Miami, actually. Uh, and I remember sitting in my seat and just being like, I was in this like consistent and just not good headspace with baseball. Like I was just, my confidence was low and I just felt like I was in like a rut. <laughs> and I remember going on my phone and booking like, I was like, I looked up like places to skydive for because I just needed like an <laughs> yeah. adrenaline, like yeah. something to like. Get, I don't. It doesn't even make any sense, but in my head at the time, I was like, I need something to just switch this up. Yeah. And I like booked it on the team flight, and I woke up that next morning at like seven in the morning. And I just went alone and went skydiving, and it didn't work. Oh, I, I was about to ask. No. I was about to ask. I think worked. if it did anything, it was like I think I proved to myself that like. It was like baseball doesn't have this death grip on me. It was a mo- it was in the point or like of my career where it was very much like if baseball's good, I'm good. If it's bad, I'm bad. And it was like I would never do anything this insane to like jeopardize like it's relatively safe, but at the same time like probably not. Yeah. And I think if there was any good to come of it, it was like it kind of got me to the point where it was like you're not you don't control me baseball but it didn't work it was dumb i'll never do it again but it was still very fun i was but glad i did it that's, but. <laughs> that's have you gone again since then no i've never i haven't gone it was the only time i went do you recommend it though it was great it was super fun yeah i was like tandem as well it was relatively <laughs> safe right but, right, I forgot um, you had to do that I, i'd go again after baseball but yeah. i probably wouldn't go until i'm done what else do you do? i know you have a lot of hobbies outside of baseball what are some of like the ones you, you do the most or you enjoy the most? i just like i like traveling the most i honestly don't have a ton of hobbies i think really? in baseball which kind of I think it's like the more I know that when I get into something, like I get like obsessively into it. And I think if I were to get into something too much in the off season, it would like somehow take away from what I was doing in season. I, so, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. If I find a hobby or something, it's like I need to find it for like that off season. And then you also there's stuff you need to do like within season, but um, I, I like I don't know. This is such a boring answer, but like I enjoy working out a lot, and I enjoy baseball, and I enjoy just like traveling and, and friends and family and like that yeah. type of stuff in season more, and then. I'd probably do a lot more stuff after baseball, though. I mean, I know you said you've kind of gotten, like, in 2019, you kind of got to the point where you're like, okay, mm-hmm. like, I belong and all mm-hmm. that stuff. But you said you still have moments that it kind of maybe will, like, come back and it's just, I don't know, like, spontaneous. Just like, oh, I had a bad game. I, yeah. Whatever. How do you, like, if you, to be able to have a lot of kids who watch, like, 16, 15-year-old kids who just don't know, like, the up and ups and downs yeah. of baseball, they're just not prepared for that. What would you say to them as, like, advice to deal with that kind of stuff? Honestly, like, it's just inevitable. Like, yeah. I, I I think the biggest thing that I've taken away, like, before start sometimes, they'll it'll be like I'll go back and like look or I'll like log it down of like how did I feel before this start or how did I feel before this start and like I was extremely nervous before this one seven scoreless and then it's like okay and then I felt extremely confident before this extremely confident before this one five innings five runs so Mm. it's like I think going back and looking at like it does not matter how you feel you just have to get to the point where like if your routine is set physically and mentally whatever that looks like I Mm -hmm. think it could, it'll always be like an up and down experience like we talked about. But like if you have a set physical routine and like you, you kind of know exactly what you do before each start, like your warm up, you're this, you're that, you're that. Like as long as that, like your preparation is always consistent, it really doesn't matter how you feel. Yeah. Like I've had starts where I'm like, I feel terrible and I just go out and dominate. So yeah. like I think over time in the moment, I can still remind myself when I am feeling that. 
it's just like, that doesn't matter. Like, yeah. I know you think it matters, but it really doesn't matter. And that usually gets me to like, not necessarily calm down, but just realize like, it's like the whole like this too shall pass thing. Sure. It's not like I wish I had more of like a, this is a good way to fix it, to not feel those things. But like, if you're going into it thinking that you're going to find something to not feel those things, that's just like, you're setting yourself up for failure. It's yeah. more about like, just realize that it's always going to be tough. And yeah. that's just how it's, that life is, I guess. And yeah. baseball, like just how it is. I had a whoop band like for like mm-hmm. a year. You know those? Do you? Yeah. Have, yeah. I was a big <laughs> whoop guy. And, at, but at some point it just like, it messed with my head. Cause I'd wake yeah. up, I'd, I was training pretty like, you know, religiously. I was lifting whatever. I'd wake up a bullpen day and I'm like, I feel pretty good. And then I'd check my recovery right. score. It'd be like 42. And yeah. I'd be like, I don't really know if I feel that good anymore. It would just like mess with my yeah. head. So I just took it for a year. I just stopped using it. I don't know right. if I prefer it more or less. I feel like maybe I understand my body a little more, but at the same time, I like the quantitative data. I think that's cool. I think it's, yeah. I think it depends what you want to get out of it. I don't wear it in season either. Like you I don't, give, yeah. no, cause it's like, I'm going to feel bad sometimes right. you know, when you look at it. Like, yeah. and I think too, the best thing is like, just like, I guess like the sleep coach stuff on it, uh-huh. not the coat, but like looking at what did I do the night before to get good sleep and like, like. And you can track the patterns and, yeah, and stuff. And yeah, repeat that. And I only really wear it in the off season just yeah. because I don't have to do the competition all the time. Right. But I, I only wear it in the off season usually, and then a little bit in spring just to try and figure that like early schedule sleep out. And then if I need, if I do feel like I'm in a in like consistent weird pattern in season where I'm not sleeping well for a like throw it on and like try to measure what's going oh, cool. on or something That's like cool. that. Yeah. But I don't really try. I don't look at like the recovery score too much in the off season. I look at it a lot, mm-hmm. and I try to figure out like when I'm good, when I'm bad, but. And see, I don't get put too much weight into it yeah. for the same reasons you just said. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, I'm glad someone else dealt with that. Yeah. I feel like I was crazy. I've like, had oh, that conversation with so many that's people. That's good. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. Yeah. I should probably get into a whoop again because it was fun. Like, I yeah. loved it. And you get in the little groups of people and you, you know, try to get it right. strained yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I mean, if it is in season, though, or like when you're playing, don't, and it stresses you out, just don't use it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> or just find something or just do a thing where it, I don't know if you can turn the recovery thing off or just look at your sleep stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess I just wouldn't yeah. look at it. What's your like routine right now in the off season look like day to day or week to week? Uh, it's a lot more working out in the off season than it is in season. Cause in season, I just think like the volume of throwing and like mixing that with like the lifting and conditioning just kind of doesn't work yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but it's like, it's five or six days a week of lifting. And I think this is what, this is a really good kind of coach for. I used to just like write my programs out week to week and just no matter how my body felt, just like push through these like insane workouts. But I think I'm more, I'm starting to realize now, like following this, like less, not less is more, but like, I think for me, I always end up like doing too much in a sense. Mm. Like I have that like obsessive type, like more is more mentality. And yeah. I think the older yeah. I get, I realize like, okay, you want to go squat 450 pounds, <laughs> like, but you just like try to keep it on like a healthy schedule and like stay within like a good recovery range. But it's still like, um, certain week I was doing like uh, four days a week of upper and lower mm-hmm. like circuit days. And then now I'm like lower upper, like, um, recovery. So it's like a lower Monday, Tuesdays, upper Wednesdays, a more like recovery, hot tub, cold tub, like mobility, right. Thursday, lower Friday, upper Saturday, another like mobility type thing. And my bullpens are Tuesday, Friday. So okay. I'm doing like lower upper now with like heavier weight, lower reps, and then earlier, it's like hypertrophy, higher rep stuff. But so yeah. you upper on the same day that you do bullpen. bullpen yeah. 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 Did you have? Are they like the same bullpens? Like thirty pitches or whatever? Yeah, around there. Right now, it's been like thirty. The last couple, the first ones were like twenty or like fifteen, twenty. Now it's been like thirty. I'm like ramping up the volume. And for me, as I get into spring, like especially within season, my bullpens are generally only like ten pitches. Really? Like I don't really like. Oh, okay. I just, I just at this point too, I feel like when I was younger, I had to like really learn each I just felt so different each start in the minor leagues to where I had like I took each day as like a way to go practice timing and like getting that good feeling gotcha. I think as I've gotten older and like more consistent with my mechanics like it's just I just don't really go need to go throw all that much and you know, I just feel so much better if I don't throw like 35 pitch bullpens in the middle of the yeah, season so that's another big, thing like yeah I don't like going on the flat ground either that much really I try do to you, limit my flat ground be long as toss I can. no I just do I'll do like um like a a little, like a seven ounce ball, a little bit just to warm up. Yeah. I'll do like some walking marshals, like some warm up yeah. stuff. I'll do like, I have like a long, like 40 minute routine I do every day, like body wise. And then I'll take the five ounce ball and just do most of my throwing indoors against a wall. Really? And, and if I'm trying to get my like spine angle back, cause I'm so down all the time, I'll just aim it up on the wall and do a five ounce. I'll do some underload. I'll do five ounce and I'll get to the point where I'm like, I can go out to the mountain and throw as hard as I possibly can. Really? So I can limit okay. my throwing on the flat ground. Just for me, like I'm a long lever dude. Right. And when I video myself on flat ground, I'm, I'm like two ticks late on the flat ground every time. Interesting. When I'm, when I'm on the mound though, or if I am it like, times up. 
kind of angling it, I'm, my timing is way better. So overall doing that, my arm has been so much better. So you don't really care to see, a lot of people like to see how their ball. I used to a lot, like I used to yeah. care a lot, but I think that's what, like I, I know, I think mechanically when I'm warmed up inside throwing it on the wall, like I know when my body's in a good spot. That's so cool. I will still go to the flat ground and I'll get like 10 of those. Mm-hmm. I'll get to the point, I'm like already warmed up, I'll get to 120 and I'll see how it's going. But at most of my stuff, I, f- I get it on the mound and I just get, fix it on the mound. I just get like more consistent that way. Uh, that makes sense. What's your What's your biggest goal right now that you're working on or biggest thing? Or are you just trying to just get ready? Because it's more like consistency. Just trying consistency. to like, I think what I found too with having like, um, like my arm now, which just feels so much better than it did. And I think finding all these things out when I was hurt for so long mm. helped me kind of like solidify that routine. I think it's more about just like, I've had, I felt really good on the mound the last few years. And it's just about like, like there's nothing I'm trying to change. It's about it's just like maintaining strength, maintaining recovery, and like staying on this routine. And like I think the season's your best coach. You know, yeah. like I think I, you you adjust within season so long to where like I'll, I have this routine that's been a staple for so many years. But like if I do need to tinker a little bit, it's the season's usually my like is my coach. It's yeah. like that's when I know how to like make my adjustments. So you had TJ, right? Yeah. Is that your first TJ? It was my first TJ. Well, and, I, and now it's been like 16 months. Or 16 whatever. months and you're bat, you're feeling good? So much better. What was so, it like when you're like, ah, oh, you <laughs> Dude, it was like, I heard it in 19 against the Orioles um, and I kept getting MRIs on it and no one could see what was going on but I was like, something is wrong. <laughs> yeah. So like, and then the same injury in 20 and it would like kind of callous over or whatever and like you like sprained it and stuff no so i we look at it and they're like okay you have like a tiny little tear but there's nothing oh. really there and we never we didn't know what was going on it was 19 the same thing mri 20 same thing mri 21 same thing it was like around the same time it would hurt too i'd have like 11 to 14 starts and it would just give out mm. and i finally was like all right my mris aren't showing it but i need to just let's just go in and do it and they went in and they found that it wasn't so on the mri you can see like the health of the tendon like mm-hmm. like how I get, and so there was no tears in it, but the actual whole thing was like off of my bones. So oh, when you look at the <laughs> yeah. MRI, the, the tendon itself looked fine, but you couldn't see that this whole thing was like detached. Whoa, so that's not a normal UCL it's, tear, I, right? No, it was, so it just came off of the bone. I think it happened before, but you just can't pick it up in the MRI. That's and the doctor so was like, no, oh, dude, like I, we had no idea. <laughs> that's on like, me. Like, no, not even. Yeah, he was like, yeah. it's yeah. the thing, I was still throwing like hard. Right, I, guess I was you can't still. See it, yeah. I was still like competitive, so it was like I'm not going to get surgery. I don't need so to. So you didn't have any velo drop or anything Nothing at all. Wow, that's and I weird. think it was just I don't know what it's the stuff around it was strong, but I think it ripped off. I'm I'm positive it ripped off in 19 because it was like wow. the stuff I had to do before games in 19, 20, and 21. It would take me like an hour and 10 minutes to just like get it going, and it would like finally start to numb up. And it was like, and that's I honestly nuts. thought it was like, all right, I'm just going to have to deal with this the rest of my career. Yeah. And I had this Tommy John and now I'm like, wow, like it, it's so much better. It's incredible. So insane. it was, you, and I mean, I guess you probably have so many stuff, the precautions to go through as mm-hmm. a big leaguer. Everyone's probably, you have so many people telling you like, Hey, this is what you do. We know how to, how to make sure you're hundred percent coming back to it. Like, do, so you, you, you think it was worth it? Like getting oh TJ and all yeah. that well, stuff? I yeah. think like, I'm glad I didn't get the surgery in 19. I probably should have, but I still had 20 and 21 and I pitched really well. Then. Uh-huh. And I wasn't like solidified in 19 or anything. I was still like the up and down. I didn't know if I was like going to be good or not. And then I pitched really well in like 19, 20 and 21 and then got it. And now I feel really good. I'm really glad I got it. I think it would be great to like get it and have those full seasons, but mm-hmm. I, I just didn't know at the time. I thought everything was fine. I just had elbow issues. But like huh. now that it's back and fully healed, I feel like I'm a minor leaguer. It's crazy. That's <laughs> sick. You must be pumped for this season. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited. What are you like most excited for for this season? Just the same, like just being around the Rays like clubhouse and players uh-huh. and like the the atmosphere there is just amazing. Like the the culture of the Rays is just insanely different. I think really? coming from like other guys come from other teams and or other organizations too. And I've had so many people just come up to me and be like, is this normal? Like, is this Cause it's like it smaller is? market. Everyone's They're just it very or? like, it's, I think a lot of times in certain organizations, like you can have these like weird, like front office is one thing. Coaches are one thing. Players are one thing. Mm-hmm. Like they're kind of m- m- just mingled differently in other yeah. organizations. And like the Rays, maybe because it is a small market, but they're very like, everyone is together in a sense and it's not this like we're better than you or like up here down here it's like very communal and i just think everyone gets along so well and it's like i like to refer to the front office or the coaches or to get information i don't feel like they're 
I don't know. It's like hard to explain. You, you don't think they're hard to like access? Like, you I think sometimes there's a, there's a separation between front office and players because it's like employer employee. Right. right. It's like they trade, they do, it, they do all blah blah blah. But like they're they're so open and honest with everything that like the trust is there. So when people go and they have such a good understanding of like how do you get pitchers especially yeah, better, right? Because that's really the only like department I deal with. I uh -huh. guess that like there's so much trust that like. It's not this weird relationship. It's just like it's a full trusting. It's so much fun. And the atmosphere, like cash especially, puts together and like uh, like our GM in front of it's just so, it's very relaxed. It's very like let's go out and have fun. And I think that's uh, like pretty unique for today's game. Do you think like having that tight culture leads to more wins? Like yeah, it must, right? Absolutely. There's so many people that I think sometimes too, like the Rays are well known for guys who like – might not have done well in the past. Like for me, example, like they'll get a guy who they're really good at analyzing like their numbers and their raw stuff. And they're just like, okay, we can probably like fix this person. Right. Or if they come here and we can give them what to do. And I think they just, you come from maybe a different organization. That's like a lot more like unwritten rules and like it's yeah. kind of that atmosphere. Yeah. And you come to the Rays and it's just like so relaxed. I think guys can finally like just exhale and they get that first taste of like doing well in that confidence. And they remember like, the reason that the Rays got them is because they're good. And yeah. like, you kind of forget that if you struggle for a while. So, so like they're playing freer. Like yeah, they, everyone's yeah. just freer. I think yeah. everyone just, you're allowed to be yourself. It's very like communal and awesome and fun. That's awesome. All right, guys, I want to take a quick minute to talk about the sponsor of today's episode, Los Reyes Sunglasses. So if you guys have been paying attention to our social media, we released our own Enjoy the Show sunglasses, and I think they're pretty dope. Here's our clip of giving them to Tyler. Oh, yeah, we just oh, came wow. out with glasses. Okay. February, so I thought we'd just give you a pair. And oh, sick. You could take them home. Yeah, nice. the show's called Is Enjoy the Show. Yeah, yeah. We, we had oh, those oh, made. Yeah. Yeah. I've been working on them for like the past Who'd month. Who'd you partner with? Los Reyes. That's our oh. that's our guy. Yeah, they, oh, nice. they have a collab with Tyreek Hill, which is oh, super cool. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah, Like the ones. Yeah. Also, I want to talk about another sponsor of the episode, Jack's Batting Gloves. So if you've seen my last few videos, Jack's Batting Gloves has been a big sponsor of it because they released their new Model 1 Batting Glove, and it's selling really well right now. So I promoted it a couple weeks ago in the Max Clark pod, and it's just killing it right now. The glove is very durable, it's affordable, and it's dope. They have all these dope colorways, and they're coming out with even more very soon. They're amazing batting gloves. Go check out their website if you want some more information, but I know the season's coming up, and you guys might need some new gloves, so go check them out. Jack's Batting Gloves. Use code DSARM. And thank you guys so much for supporting the podcast, so let's get right back to the episode with Tyler Glass now. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask about when you got called up. Like, do you have a like a cool story from Not when you got really. called up? Yeah, I yeah, I they called. I think it was like twelve at night. I don't remember what time it was, but I was at home and I was like, I didn't recognize the number, and then I just like screened it. I didn't do anything, and then they called back again, and 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 then my coach left a voicemail and was like, "Stop screening my call." <laughs> I just didn't have his number. I got called up like I didn't have his number yet. Yeah. And then he told me, he's like, yeah, you're going up to the big leagues. You're pitching against St. Louis. It's a day game. And I was like, oh, I had so many different emotions at the time, too. I was like this wave of nervousness slash like super excitement and had this like pep talk with myself of like, you shouldn't be nervous. Like, you're so prepared. You're ready. And it made me like, yeah, let's, yeah, let's go. go. And it was, it was cool. Did you do well in that start? I did pretty well. I think I had like no hits for like four innings. And then I think I gave up like... I gave up a run, and there was a guy in first and third, and those got cashed in. Someone came in and cashed those in. So it was like five and a third inning, or five innings with like three runs or something. So yeah. it was like the stats weren't as good as I think I, I pitched, right. but like I was mad, too. I was, yeah. I was so like, I, upset. I remember you talking about that in the mic pod where you like you pitched angry for a while, or like you would pitch yeah. angry. No, when you then I was. I pitched like a scared dog. Oh, right? okay, I yeah, was yeah. Like, oh, like a puppy yeah. right? when I was young. But I think that's what initially, I think, sparked that. Like, I think the way I think about I've said this to a couple people too, like the only, you've never felt like angry and anxious at the same time. Anger is like the one emotion that just like trumps all the other emotions. So yeah. I think for me realizing like if I can somehow get angry, it's the only time I don't feel this like uncomfortable, nervous feeling. Yeah, and it was this point where like I, I kind of just got to this place where I could like get into my head and like get in and like listen to music and get on the treadmill, do my warm up, and like trick myself into feeling like this anger. And yeah. I think after a while, I, I like it was always there, but I think before in the minor leagues I would have that, and then I just think that nervousness kind of like got on top of it, and I realized like if I could somehow like summon some anger, my sure. nervousness was not something I was like focused on, and I think just over time like you realize too like it's always I guess a balancing act. You don't want to be too angry because it's just it's you're wasting too much energy. I feel like it's not sustainable, right? Either, yeah. So it's just, so you get to get to the point where like if it's like in doses, if if you're feeling that like tr maybe supplementally like kind of 
if I am nervous, I'll kind of try to like tap into that a little bit. And as the game goes on, it's like trying to find that middle ground. Now. Yeah. Do you ever have, like, I feel like it must be really surreal at times to be like, oh, this is like, I'm living out my dream. Like, was your dream always to be a big leaguer? Like, I, yeah. 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 It's like the only thing I ever thought about, like as a little kid. I, it's funny too. I still have moments like, and I hope I never lose this. I really don't think I will lose this is like, I still do this day. I'll sit in the dugout and just be like, like moments of just like the days I'm not pitching, you're just like being at like Yankee Stadium or something, and just like looking around at me, like this is nuts. Because yeah. I used to go to games as a little kid at Dodger Stadium and like look at the players and just have this like overwhelming jealous feeling. Yeah. Of like, God, I have to go to school tomorrow. Like, <laughs> right. Like, you just get to right. go play baseball. Like right. it was just such like a hunger that I had to get to the big leagues. And so I always have, especially when I'm sitting in the dugout, like the me as a little kid looking at the kids in the dugout. Like I'm now sitting in the dugout and I look up and I'm like. It's crazy. Yeah, like, yeah, that makes so much. I think about like even making content now. Content in like videos is kind of my new competitive competition with myself. And like baseball, I was really OCD about it. Like my mm-hmm. regiment, very you know, regiment, all that stuff. And yeah. now I take that into content and planning videos. We want to make huge, awesome videos. And, and so I feel like. I make videos for 15 year old me. So mm-hmm. I think that's if, cool. if 15 year old me was sitting down with Tyler Glass now, right. right now, I would like, my mind would be blown. So like for me sitting here right now, it's kind of like, Oh yeah, it's oh, like cool. a moment like that. So oh, let's go. Yeah. yeah. So thanks for that, man. Um, it's, it's just sure. super, it's super exciting. And yeah. Mike's, Mike Studs podcast really sparked my idea to make the, my own podcast cool. and listening to your episode with him was one of those big, like, Oh, I should do this with my friends. And then obviously it's shifted to more yeah. like interview nice. big league. That's awesome. cool. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Uh, cool little full circle moment for me. But, do you have a, the, a good draft day story or anything? Was that like more climactic? I was, this is back when I like just slept for like 50 hours. I was just like growing into myself and uh-huh. I, just, I would sleep like 11 hours a day in oh high school. God. It was just insane. Well, you're 18, right? Yeah, you're, I was yeah, just like yeah. in that yeah. space. And I remember it was like 11 o'clock and my mom woke me up. It was like 11 a.m. She's like, you just got drafted. Like first pick of the fifth round. I was like, <laughs> no and way. I, and I was just all tired. I like showered. And it like hit me, and I was like, "Wow!" And I went on Facebook and was like, first pick of the fifth round, like a douche." <laughs> like looking back at that stuff, it's yeah. just funny. It was awesome. I was very happy, like super proud. Uh, and then I got the calls, and then figured it out, and then like I got drafted on like I don't know, it was like a Monday or something. And then I had to go like, oh no, we I guess we negotiated. But once I negotiated and like got the contract, it was like two days later I was gone. I remember that being like a weird feeling of being like okay maybe i can sign and like hang out with my family and they were like nope you're coming out would you have to go arizona or florida florida yeah Bradenton. was it a no-brainer for you to sign or were you no, still i was so back and forth the whole time where were you committed university of portland, portland yeah and i, I think that yeah. was part of the reason i like because i committed in junior year when i was like 84 mm. and they were like a d1 school they gave me a good scholarship and i committed verbally and i think i signed too senior year yeah um and then yeah i think that was probably Sort of, I think I was like talking to UCLA and Berkeley and stuff, and I think if I committed there, I, I probably would have gone to school. But I remember coming back one day with my parents sitting in the car and realizing like I, I like hate homework so much, and like Dude. they're gonna pay me to play baseball, yeah. and like they're and they also we negotiated like if I didn't make it, I, I could get my college funding and all that. Yeah. So I remember that day, I was like, all right, I'm go, I'm gonna go play pro ball. That's <laughs> like, so sick. Yeah. That, that's how I feel. Like Leo's 19, Cam's 17, I'm 20. We're yes. literally just like we don't like school. We always just talk about how we just yeah. hate doing school. We just want to make content and videos and yeah. travel and stuff like that. Yeah. So I relate to that because yeah. I'm I doing online like school and I still am just like, dude. Yeah. It's tough. It's one of those things like just sacrifice you got to do to like blah blah blah. But Exactly. Yeah, I, I didn't like it either. I was always like a fine student. I just did enough to like get by. I knew mm-hmm. I wanted to play baseball. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't like it either. <laughs> Dude, that's so cool. I don't know. It's just so cool <laughs> to me to think of someone who like you had this dream at whatever, 10, 11, 12 mm-hmm. years old, and you're living that dream today. Uh, to, to like kind of pivot, eh, not really pivot. What advice would you have for a kid who <laughs> wants to like accomplish something that seems really far fetched, but I you don't know, like a 15 year old kid? I'd say like the rational side of me would say like, do it as hard as you possibly can, knowing that a lot of the days will suck. And if it doesn't suck, then you're probably not doing it right. Like, mm-hmm. you have to have a point, like, you have to sacrifice something. Like, it has to, it can't just be, like, easy for you. Like, you have to expect there to be very, very difficult days. Like, a lot of ups and downs to do it. But if you love it, it's probably not hard to, like, withstand that type of up and down. Right. But I'd say, I'd just say, like, there's, like, sacrifices. Like, you're not going to be able to do everything you want to do. You have to, like sacrifice your current situation to have a better future down the road. And even like talk about like how much I hated school, but I still like made sure I had to get good. I hated it. But like you have to do those things and like sell it. And you you want to make that your priority, whatever dream or goal you have. And not to be like the Debbie Downer, but like it is, uh, it's not a bad thing to have a plan B. I Mm. think some people talk about like plan B, like I got to put it all in plan A, but like you putting all your effort into plan A doesn't 
like you can still have a plan B. Yeah. You can work just as hard as plan A knowing that like And it prepares you yeah. more for if you have to pivot right. you gain all that knowledge. Right. And I think that's just how my brain works. And like maybe people might have other like uh, advice, but I think for me that's was always kind of my thing, even with baseball as well. Like I need to do kind of like I need to get A's and B's in school because if this doesn't work out, like I have I'm like a high school educated, no college, right. you know what I mean? I have to like yeah. What was your plan B like in high school? Did you have one? It was uh, to go back to school or uh-huh. like I think too it was always like some sort of like like wanting to start a business and mm-hmm. that was not something I was like excited about compared to baseball, but right. it was that or I wanted to go to school and do like psychology. That's probably wouldn't a great idea. But it was always like early on it was go back to school, get a degree and then figure out what I want to do. But mm-hmm. um yeah, I didn't. I didn't have to. Yeah, luckily. Yeah. Yeah. What's it like throwing a hundred miles an hour plus? <laughs> like, what, does this feel different? Like, I, I don't know. I think it. I think it feels pretty good. I yeah. remember the first time I did it. It's like you have those moments in your your life where you like the first times and you always remember it. Like yeah. the first kiss and like, you're right, like you're right. first time I threw a hundred, I vividly remember it. Like, what was the when was it? I was. It was in high A. It was in. Uh, was it Jupiter? It was in the Florida State League. It was against the Marlins. They're in Jupiter, right? Marlins High A? I, I yeah, nice, know, nice. yeah. <laughs> and I forgot. I think I was facing Dendecker. I don't remember who I was facing. Was he even with them? <laughs> um, but I remember it was like a 1-2 or, two, or an 0-2. Oh, I knew I had two strikes, and I was like, I'm just going to throw this as hard yeah. as I possibly can. They had like a, a radar up there. And I just backlegged it. And I threw it so I just tried to throw it really hard. And generally, when you try to throw it really hard, you don't throw it hard. Yeah. But I just felt so timed up this game that I was like, this is the time to do Let's it. Let's go. And I threw it. I, I don't know if it was like, I guess I don't remember vividly. I don't know if it was sure. swinging or if he was <laughs> yeah. looking, but I remember throwing it and looking back and being like, oh, 100? Like, That's my coach crazy. too was like, you had 100. Yeah. And I was like, just so happy. What do you think the biggest difference that got you from like 90 to 100 was? I think honestly, um, a lot of it for me, I'm like 6'8, I throw hard. There's a lot of it is genetics, yeah. but I think most of it was realizing like how. I was always very quad dominant and I was always like uneven and I didn't do a lot of mobility and mm. I was like, not stiff, I'm a pretty lengthy dude, but um, I was just do a lot of like squats and like core. Cause when you're younger, it's just like get your legs and core strong. So right. it's like just sit ups and f- squats all the time. So I was just really like quad dominant and my, f- all my momentum was always taking me forward. So I was very across my body. Mm-hmm. And I think the second I started to really understand like the hinge pattern of like yeah. that straight bar deadlift, and like really getting into my legs and like coiling into my hips and getting strong in the weight room, but while also maintaining like mobility. Uh-huh. Like I just got obsessed with that, like my my routine in the weight room. Interesting. Um, figuring out that like that weight on my heel, like not consciously like back, but like if I'm stacked up, my weight's on my heel and I'm dropping and driving and taking all my force home, that's when I really started to like to to like just have a sequence, like a huge yeah. difference in velo, and yeah. I used to be very long and. It's tough because it's like you see these. Th- at least I see these things all the time, where it's like uh, five mile an hour, five miles an hour in a week, or like you know, there's like different programs that mm-hmm. they want to sell you on it. Yeah, it's just right. like I, it just sucks because like when I was 14, I'd be like, oh, if I do uh, whatever, what are these called, like flies or right. whatever, I'm gonna gain five miles an hour in a right. week just because this video told me. But yeah. I think it's hearing it from someone like you who's a big leaguer who's like, no, you need to figure it out. You really need to figure it out yourself because everyone's different than everyone. Yeah. Hopefully, I think people will start to understand. Like, right. Or you find like good coaches, and that's what's hard when you're younger. It's like you don't might not have access to it so, yeah like yeah. finding people or pitching coaches or where i think it's a lot of it is like i guess if you don't have access to it like physically figuring out where you're limited and like pit like i don't know figuring out like what it takes to throw hard and like yeah. it's just so hard it's so different for everyone but there yeah. is no quick fix anytime you hear someone say like do this one thing and you'll throw harder it's, just, it's not it's like it's a whole you have to do a lot of things you know consistently all the time to throw hard yeah i feel like a lot of it's just got to kind of figure out through trial and error on your own, like, or at least yeah. find uh, find a mentor who knows more than you, right. who can teach you what they know, and then find another mentor who maybe knows different. Right. And like learning from failure as well. Like, if you keep getting, like, if you're doing bad the same way consistently, and like your failures are all, are consistently your failures. Right. Like for me, it was always walking guys, mm-hmm. and then I would start to spiral. Like as when I was younger, I was just it was hard to throw strikes, and it would just I'd walk guys, it would spiral, I'd do bad. And it was consistently that. So it's like eliminate walking, throw more strikes, and. And when you're ahead, you're confident and you put guys away. Like, yeah. And that's yeah. simple. It's kind of like a simple thing. But yeah. for me, that's what, that's what mine was. Yeah. All right. I mean, if there's I, I, I have one more question. Um, if there's something that you could look back on your career and be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad I did this. Or I don't, know, some, I, I don't know how to word it. But it's like if you can look back at your career and be and say I was successful, what would success look like? That I did everything I possibly could to be as good as I possibly can. Like, I think 
it's like finding a balance of not making baseball your everything. But like, I think there's a l- part of me that's like very afraid of looking back and being like, I could have done more mm-hmm. in a sense like that. Um, so I think just, yeah, making sure like I'm doing everything I possibly can to be good. And at the same time, not sweating the little things, like not trying to be so perfect, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I think that's a good place to end. Yeah. Nice. What do you guys, oh, Sweet. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, I thanks, really, guys. really appreciate it. Awesome.